stages to really showcase that. You know what I'm saying? That's or what, develop that. Oh yeah, you yeah. feel me? And it's like everything else being built up except like creative shit. You know what I'm saying? So I know once I'm in a position to change that, I'm definitely going to do that. You know what I mean? Like you touching on early on doing this shit 2011, 2013, talking about the Source exactly. magazine, right? We, we can get into that too. But it's like, touch on that. Like, just like, because you haven't got your, in my, in my eyes, you haven't got your like world breakout moment yet. So right, touch on right. just that process of how, bro, you've been doing this shit for, you said 2011. Hell so just yeah, being hell somebody yeah. that's still doing it, um, developing. Like a lot of artists, they quit before they even give themselves time to develop to the point to get to their peak, right? Nah, that's a fact. So just, y'all know like, if you like touch on that, like, Oh, I mean, shit, man, definitely been a journey, long road and shit. Like you said, man, I, since I've really been rapping before 2011, shit, like shit, since I was like 14, you know what I'm saying? Like 2006, niggas was actually in the studio making songs, making mixtapes and shit like that. And I be real with you, you know, it was a process. It was a real grind. Niggas wasn't dropping what we dropping now off rip. You know, I had to work to get to that point, but like, Shit, by the time I was 17, 18, I had already pretty much worked up a, a a respectable reputation for myself, you know what I'm saying? And a, and a lot of my peers who I was alongside with at the time as well, they was doing their motherfucking thing. So it was like just a ripple effect. We was all buzzing and bubbling at the same time. And I feel like when I, at 18, that's when shit kind of hit the fan for me. Like, it just was like, boom, who the fuck is this Bucky Malone kid? Like. And that's from, like, D.C., all over Virginia. Like, where it was, like, traveling fast as shit. And, man, and that was just a different time. Like, that was, like, during the so-called, you know, you can call it the blog era and shit like that. So that was when you could just post a link and genuinely get, like, 100 or more impressions just off the strength that it's just up there and people are just anxious to, you know what I'm saying, soak up some shit, you know what I mean? Like, so at that time, it was, like, I, I was really thriving, bro. When I look back at that shit, I'm like, a lot of shit that was happening was so organic, I can't even explain it, bro. Like, I was just doing certain shit. I was not planning it. I was just doing it, and it would just work. You know what I'm saying? And pretty much from that point on, I've always been a consistent artist. I've always dropped a lot of music. So it was kind of always like a legend, you know what I'm saying? Just from the online presence, people constantly seeing my shit on the internet. and then, But at the time, like I said, I'm 18, so boom, my shit booming. And I'll never forget this shit. Like, this like this is the blog era. I, I forgot what blog it was. This shit might not even exist no more. <coughs> I found out about ASAP Rocky because I was on a, uh, it was like top 30 best DMV songs or some shit. It's like 2010. ASAP Rocky was on there? ASAP Rocky was on there. Now nah, he wasn't on there, but they had me. He, he in New York, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah. He from, you know, Harlem. But, like, they had my first video, Sprinkles, on there, the song I was talking about. They had featured it. A joint with a sample from the, from the yeah, video game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, boom. In the write-up, they was just like, whoop, whoop, whoop. Like, the vibes is like, they, they kind of compared me to, like, ASAP Rocky. And I was kind of like... At the time, I didn't know who ASAP Rocky was. So I was just like, damn, who the fuck is ASAP Rocky? And then, like, I just, like, they went and did my homework, and I'm like, oh, shit, like, these niggas raw. You know what I mean? I fuck with these niggas. But that kind of, like, exposed me to the whole blog era and this shit. Like, oh, these niggas is doing, like, the fuck? Like, you know what I mean? I had no idea about write-ups and shit like that until, like, those moments. Like, I'm just like, damn, niggas got me on a top 30 list. Because I remember my song was... <clears throat> it wasn't even like it was super high. It just was the the songs that was after mine. Like, I might have been, like, 20 such and such, but they had me above Wale at the time. Wale's on MMG. So I'm like, damn, who the fuck got me above Wale? Like, I ain't never heard of this website. I don't know who these niggas is. You know what I'm saying? This is crazy. For me at that time, I'm like, this is crazy. Like, you know what I mean? Like, we just getting started, and we ain't out here push, put, putting it in nobody's faces. Put, we ain't got no crazy bread to push behind it. We just dropping and just going about it in a organic way and it just picked up fast bro to tell you the truth and me being so consistent and just keeping it authentic and true to myself bro I feel like that's really it stood the test of time as far as just me as an artist and my music because I don't to be real I mean on the outside looking in people may feel like I haven't got my just due 
But I feel like I have. It's just been different waves of it. It's been different eras because the game has changed so much. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm going to be real with you, bro. I was fucking crushing the blog era if we being real. We can go back and look like, even to this day, you look at live mixtapes, like niggas was doing hundreds and thousands, me and Slim K and Chop Stars. So it's like a lot of people don't know this shit because it was a different era. Like shit and it switched up about three or four times. You didn't have the, the live mixtape wave, the spin real waves. And now, you know, we on streaming services. So it's like nowadays, niggas is just going straight on their phone, hopping on the Apple or Spotify. So it's like, if they wasn't outside when niggas was on the live mixtapes, getting the mixtapes and doing all that, it may look like I'm just a nigga that spawned out of nowhere on some Call of Duty shit. But for the real niggas who really know, they like, nah, this nigga been, for as long as I known this nigga, he's been dropping singles with ASAP Ty Beats, Icy Twat, Lord Fubu, DJ Smokey. Like, whoever you can think of that was crushing the underground scene and went mainstream or whatever, you know, we didn't we didn't all work together and made some crazy historical shit together. So it's just like I'm all for educating the motherfuckers who don't know. You know, that's what I'm here for. If niggas don't know, they can find out. You know what I'm saying? But I get a lot. I feel like I get a lot of love and appreciation and shit like that. It's just that we in a different time, man. Shit is so microwaved up. Like it's microwave music being made. Niggas' attention span short as hell. It's just like it's a lot to focus on. To be real, so. I can see how it's easy for shit to get lost in the sauce, you know, for anybody, because there's so much fucking shit going on. It's hard for me to keep up with some of this shit. So I try to, like, look at it from a consumer's point of view and just be like, niggas got to just stop trying so hard to get the attention and just come with some hot, some dope shit. Bring some creative. Motherfuckers ain't going... You're going to notice some, some hard-ass shit and some creative shit. Like, you ain't going to just look over it like, oh, that shit hard. Nah, it's going to catch your eyes. So I feel like people just got to focus on making eye-catching shit instead of, like, the what's in type shit. You know what I'm saying? Looking at it from a consumer's point of view, like you're saying, what do you think um, What do you think it was, like, some things that made that the, that blog era special? And, like, what are some, maybe some things you like about these different eras that, like, and, like, the era we're in now? Facts. I love... I'm glad... That's a good-ass question. I'm glad you asked that shit. Because each era has, like unlock the special quality that's evolved the game in some type of way, you know what I'm saying? So I was I say this, right? So with the blog era, this shit went out. My bad. Oh, you guys was rapping this shit. You good? <laughs> the blog all right, so all right. Blog era, right? I feel like the blog era was so fucking potent because it was the first time in a minute since like the masterpiece cash money days and shit that you were seeing artists saying, fuck the labels. We're packaging and putting out our own shit. We're dropping it on that piff, live mixtapes, YouTube. SoundCloud. We're out here doing SoundCloud. Even before the SoundCloud days, like MySpace, we're doing all this shit ourselves, putting it out ourselves, our, putting our own street teams together, and we just hitting the pavement. And when you touch the people like that, it's always going to be special. You know what I'm saying? That was the th I feel like that was why the blog era hit so so crazy because people was out here like I remember watching the day to day episodes with you know what I'm saying like, going, to Penn, going to Penn State like nigga like just look like imagine Wiz going to Penn State now shit's gonna be in shambles even back then when he was underground he still had it going crazy and that was because they was smacking the shit out these little towns and these colleges bro like so it's just like it was just real grass rooted, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. People were touching the people, people was actually interacting with their fans. Niggas wasn't shit. Like on direct their connection from artists to fans. Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah. It was direct connection from artists to fans. It wasn't nobody shitting on nobody, it wasn't no too cool shit happening. And it was like it was just a time to be a fan again. I feel like the listeners were excited to get shit from That's artists. Interesting. That's interesting too though, cause look, do you think that people take that for granted now? Cause look, yes. before that I never thought about it like that. Before that era, all of our superstars were like Mad, unreachable, unattainable. Exactly. You didn't know what you didn't know what fucking Michael Jackson was doing right now. It wasn't exactly. on his story. You didn't know what he did five minutes ago. So it was this level of like we don't know it what it a is. Mystery and mystique. Then uh, yeah, like then that era come, it gets more that that personal direct relationship. But now it's like it's like we take it for granted. Now exactly. it's like we don't. Now it's like, yeah, we know what Wiz Khalifa was doing five minutes ago, but it's like we don't care now because you know we saying? know what everybody was doing five minutes ago. It was a gift you know and a curse. We brought y'all closer 
But because we did that, now y'all just, it's too normal. We made mm. it super normal. So now it's just like, some motherfuckers out here damn near gotta tap dance and shit to hold the audience's attention. It's like, motherfuckers shouldn't have to do that. You know what I'm saying? Niggas out here dropping some raw ass shit, but that's just the game. That shit evolved, you know what I'm saying? That shit then changed up. So I say the blog era was definitely more direct artists and fanfare. You know what I'm saying? A lot, a lot of. I don't want to say I fuck with the. I fuck with some music that's out right now, but we got to keep it a G. It was a lot of hard music dropping at that time, and that's always gonna push everything forward if motherfuckers is coming with their best shit. You know what I'm saying? And for up and coming artists, you had a lot of shit to look forward to because you had people kind of kicking in the doors. Like, you know, it was like in the in the 80s and 90s, it was like you had certain types of rappers like. You either was like a a backpacker, a gangster rap nigga, or you made happy club songs. I feel like with the blog era, it was like every type of nigga was coming out the creases. You had like niggas like Danny Brown, like missing teeth, all type looking crazy, but hard as fuck. It wasn't niggas like that being really led mm. into the game. You had ODB, but you know, Wu Tang Clan is like the best group in the world. That's different. But it wasn't, it's like, I feel like blog era, it was like, it made it made a lane for everybody to come in and take over. You dig what I'm saying? And then when it switched over to the streaming services, I felt like that was the label's way of getting that shit back. Like, cause they had mm. lost control and shit for a second. It was like, yeah. it was like y'all thought y'all was slick. Ah, we getting all this shit back. 